Oh, idiot. So there's the radiator removed. Right then, that's a 40 minute turbo done, trying to get lean. Mega Shed Project, 24th February 24th. I've got the SV650, I'm planning to swap the uh, cams for injection cams today, and I'm gonna try and film it while I'm doing it. Who needs more power on the Mini Twin? I do, because I'm shit. Um, chap on the uh, Mini, Mini Twins forum on Facebook has sent me a set of cams from the injection second generation SV650 apparently should give this bring this up to the limit of 72 horsepower so I'm going to attempt to fit them I've watched a few videos and I've checked the manuals and everything so I'm going to see if I can do that now but first I'm going to stop my diesel heater leaking and put it on because it's freezing I'm going to start by removing the fairing, the tank and the tail unit. Because of the way my subframe is fitted, race subframe, unfortunately I have to remove the battery to get it in the bolt to get the tank off. So I'm just doing that now. Right. <coughs> I've undone the bolts underneath here. It's pretty awkward with this uh, sub <coughs> subframe. It should be on a normal bike. It would be just two bolts which hold the tank at the back. And then I've got two bolts at the front. I'll take those out, get the tank lifted up and undo the pipes. All I need to do now is remove this vacuum hose, the fuel hose, uh, fuel level sender, and I should be able to lift the tank off. Uh, I think on a, a standard bike there would be a, a breather hose somewhere coming from the fuel tank, but it looks like it's been removed on this already. Yeah, I do have an overflow to remove on this one. I just couldn't see it, it's there. Now I've got the tank and the fairing off, I'm just going to remove the air filter and the carburetors. Head torch, essential. breather pipes to remove come from the air box here. Top tip for balancing carbs, it's really hard to get to the vacuum takeoff point on the bottom stub. So when you do it, add a piece of pipe here, put a bolt in the end so you can get to balance the carbs without taking everything off to get to it. After undoing the, the uh, clamps on the stubs, uh, we've also got to remove the throttle cables, the throttle position sensor and the choke cables choke cable there and same again on the other side so I've got one of the throttle cables loose just working on the other one there it's a 10 mil and a 12 mil just to loosen those off once I get the carbs out I'll be able to remove the cables um, there's also uh, two carb heating elements with wires that go to the bottom of each carb. I'll just pull those off and then also I'll need to disconnect this uh, fuel pipe from the fuel pump. And then I will only have the choke cables to do um, and they will be easy to access once I lift the carbs up slightly. And uh, not forgetting on the left hand side here, this that is the idle adjustment screw. Uh, that just needs to be unclipped from the bottom because it's attached to the bottom of the carburetor. That just slides out from where it is. Carbs are now loose. Uh, 
choke cable on this side, put up a bit of a fight. It's a bit corroded into the ball there. I haven't had these carbs off since I've got the bike a few years ago. So, and now disconnected from the cable. And there's the carbs free. Oh, now the carbs are off. Um, I can start, I can got good access to the rear head here and take the plug lead off. Um, for the to get to the front end, really need to make some space with the by moving the radiator. So I'll loosen some bolts on that. I'll probably drain the liquid out of it. It's only got water in it, and I need to get access to the um, the crankcase. I need to put a bolt on there to turn the engine to the right position. So I'm going to, have to take my cover off. So I'll work on doing that now. Oh, having struggled for. 10 minutes trying to get this off. Um, I glued it on with some grab adhesive. Don't do that, just use some silicon, a bit of lock wire. Um, I gave up in the end because I was going to break it. There's a 17, yeah, there's a cover there with a 17 millimeter sock, uh, butt bolt which you need to put a socket on to turn the motor over to uh, show the uh, um, time in there. Uh, that says uh, R, so that's rear cylinder, top dead centre. The other way of turning it over is to put it in the top gear and turn the rear wheel. So I've just done that for now. Um, I'm thinking if I persevere I might get this off and actually uh, drill a hole in the middle of there so I can access that place. So we're at rear, uh, top dead centre so I can check the valve clearances for the rear cylinder from there. I was going to take the hose off but it's a bit stuck on there and rather than risk splitting the holes, I'm just going to drain it from here. So it's going to do a wee. Okay. Spillage. So, oh, idiot. So there's the radiator removed. Uh, remember you've got to remove the uh, temperature sender switch as well, I didn't mention before. I'll give this a bit of a flush through. So obviously it's just full of rusty water because I don't use coolant because I uh, do racing. So uh, we have to use water. Okay, I need to um, uh, remove the cam chain tensioners. And on the rear cylinder one here, uh, this is, oh, you can see the head of the bolt there. Let's move the torch. Um, it's quite difficult to get to. I'm just removing my brake light switch to get a bit of a better access to it, but um, this is going to be a right bitch. I did see a video where someone managed to remove the cams without removing that. Um, might give it a go. And the other one, uh, on the front cylinder, should be a little bit easier to get to. So I've just given it a bit of a spray with some WD, uh, GT85 or Penetrant of your choice. Um, so I just want to get some access to those and then I'm going to, um, I've just cracked the 6mm Allen uh, bolts here for the um, valve covers. Uh, I'm going to take those out and give them a tap and knock them off and uh, I'll do a clip check the valve clearances before I take the cams out. Okay, I'm trying to get this cover off. Got my cop hammer, I'm going to give it a bit of a love tap. So I'm going to change the cams, but before I do that, I'm going to check check the valve clearances, and then I'll check the valve clearance clearances again afterwards. Uh, I did look at a video for what the clearances should be last night, and I'll go and consult the um, consult manual but I'll see if I can put it up on the screen in the video. So checking the valve clearances uh, I need to set the um, the view of the crank so that it's, it's showing the letter R but as well as that it needs to be on the compression stroke and there's a picture from the um, 
manual that uh, I've taken a screenshot of that shows you the direction what the cams should be for the front cylinder and the rear cylinder while you check them. So basically the cam lobes need to be pointing upwards um, and then that allows you to get the feeler gauge underneath. Uh, so they need to be, the inlet ones need to be between 0.1 millimeter and 0.2 millimeters. So I've got 0.1 and 0.2 here just to demonstrate and you should be able to get the 0.1 through easily between the bucket and the cam which it does and the 0.2 should not go through um, I'd like to see what exactly it is I'll, I won't take a note of that and record it but at least that valve is correct I'll do the same for the rest of them and the same for the exhaust okay you can pause this but um, I've just uh, I've taken a note of what the clearances are, they're all within spec, uh, the rear exhaust right is 0.21 which is close to the spec uh, but obviously I'm going to check all of them and change the cams and check again before I think about m maybe changing any shims. Yeah, fuel tank, what a mess. Uh, so I've discovered that the vacuum fuel tap operation is not closing. Uh, it's uh, made a right mess of my floor. So I might need to service or replace the vacuum fuel tap. So I've removed this cover from the uh, cam, uh, cam chain and consulted the manual. I have put the, um, put the crank in the right position. It should have the F. Um, uh, shown in the hole at the other side and this is what the cams should look like see that two vertical three there I've marked the chain so that I can put the cams back in the same position uh, and I'll put up on the screen what the, the extract from the manual is but uh, you should have one cam the rear uh, the exhaust cam sort of pointing forward and the uh, the inlet cam sort of pointing upwards um, but the cam should look like that so um, I've now got to remove the cam chain tensioner I thought I'd do the rear one first because that one's gonna be hard to get to and then I will remove the cams so I've removed the camshaft caps and I'm gonna attempt to I've just removed the end cover from the uh, cam chain tensioner and without I haven't actually removed the whole body because so I want to do what see if I can get away with doing what I've done before on my 125 I'm just wind it back because it's going to be a pain to get it in and out if I don't uh, so I'm taking the tension off it there uh, let's see if I can get those wiggle those cams out with it held yeah I think we should be all right yeah okay I'll carry on with that and I'll come back to you when I've got them in. So I managed to, whilst without removing the cam chain tensioner, just took the end bolt off, I managed to uh, twist a small screwdriver inside to take the tension off and uh, joggle these um, cams into place. And I've got them lined up with the white dots um, on the number three and the number two, and they are in the right position to refit. I haven't, I should have coated them with oil, so I'm going to give them a liberal coating on the journals and uh, get these uh, covers, get the uh, caps back on, and um, we'll check clearances. So we've got it all, all back together in the right position, um, talked up the cap bolts gently. Um, to 10 newton meters so I went 6, 8, 10 newton meters and then I did the same for these bolts for that uh, so that's in the it's in the right position to um, change the front um, cams as well but before I do that I'm going to do um, valve clearance check on this one valve clearance check on the front before I take them out and I'll put it back to this position and then I'll go and move to changing the front cams so all good with the rear cylinder, uh, check the valve clearances afterwards, uh, virtually no change in those, uh, so all good. Uh, I'll check the fronts before I've taken them apart and they're fine. And then I've put the, um, the cams in the right position to uh, remove them and check, swap them. And so that's the front cylinder, I don't think you can see, front cylinder, top dead centre and 
as it says in the manual, comes in this position. So I'm going to take the caps off, uh, swap them like as I did before. It's a little easier to get to the cam chain tensioner on this one, so I'm going to do the same procedure and uh, swap them over. Uh, just to note, I have to remove the spark plugs so it makes it easier to turn it over. I'm just turning the engine over with the rear wheel as um, I haven't been able to get this cover off. So I've got the uh, cams, cam chain back on and the cam chain tensioner. Uh, it was a right bitch. Um, I had to make a tool. Uh, basically, I didn't couldn't get my uh, little screwdriver in, so I welded this bit up. It's just I uh, just ground a sort of M, is it an M4 bit of uh, screw and welded this onto the end of it, so I could twist it while I was tightening up and I had to use universal joint on there. But I've got it in. Bit of a bodge. It's not a bodge if it doesn't work. It's a hack. Okay, we're all talked up and um, all the uh, valve clearances are in spec, so I'm happy. I'm going to put the lids on, uh, call it a day. I think I'll put the rest of it back together tomorrow. Mega Shed out. Good morning, Mega Shed Diaries, 25th of February, day two of the cam swap on the SV650. Um, it took me about six hours yesterday to get to where I am. I was taking it really slow, I'd not done the job before. I was messing about doing videos and making tools and stuff, but uh, I reckon if you're ex experienced and you've done it a few times, it would, you'd do it a lot quicker than that. Uh, so I've just got to put, put it all back together now. So, uh, fuel tank, uh, carburetors, uh, the radiator, etc. Also, the fuel tank I discovered had um, a leak on the tap. I've already done another, another video where I've done that on my other bike, taken it apart and changed the O-ring. The whole tap, if you buy a new one from Suzuki, is £100. Bit of patience and an O ring, I hopefully should get, back, get it back together. So, I'm going to crack on putting it back together.
I'm going to admit my mistakes just in case anyone else makes the same. These two cover bolts have a seal on the bolt just underneath there. I'll take one out and show you. There. When I took them out, one of them stayed in the piece and one of them stayed on the bolt. I put them in the wrong way around, uh, so as a result, one of them had no seal and uh, it sprayed oil all over the all over my front wheel. So taking it off, realised mistake, putting them back on. Mega shed out. No leaky, no leaky.